curing a disease were as easy as typing a few lines of code. What if you could design a brand new organism using standard software that runs right on your laptop, and all you need to do is press print? Sounds like the 21st century, right? Well, why stop there? What if we could design new organisms that can suck the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and eliminate global warming? What if we could begin to personalize drugs to individuals instead of entire populations and cure disease? Or even, what if we could build entire new organs out of a patient's own cells and eliminate the organ waiting list? Or even beyond that, what if we could engineer life and help humans become an interplanetary species? That way Matt Damon doesn't have to be stuck on Mars all alone. <laughs> but seriously, guys, we, we're closer to these things than you realize. We're already building miniature organs that are being used to test and design new personalized drugs. We've already begun to edit the human genome and obliterate disease. And labs such as those run by Dr. Anthony Atala at Wake Forest University have been able to build and implant living tissues. Things like skin, tracheas, and even bladders, saving patients' lives. Progress has been slow. Biology today is done by teams of specially trained technicians. The artisans of the 21st century look like doctors and graduate students who spend countless hours moving teeny tiny volumes of fluid in and out of plastic tubes. <laughs> and does anybody here know how they do that? They do it all by hand. Now, this isn't just expensive, extremely time-consuming, and difficult to scale up, but it's actually limited biology to the flat, two-dimensional face of a Petri dish. And I mean, I don't have anything against the Petri dish. It's been great for the past 100 years or so, but it's got nothing on the dynamic 3D environment that cells experience inside of our bodies. So if we want to begin building more relevant 3D living tissue models and accelerate the pace of development in biology, we need to begin to blend robotics and biology and rethink the modern laboratory. Now, this isn't a new concept. Synthetic biologists often compare their work to the early days of computer programming. They like to simplify biology to an integrated computer circuit that's programmable. Only instead of zeros and ones, you're messing with genes, RNA, and proteins, the stuff of life. I started BioBots with a friend back in August 2014. Our mission was to empower people to build with life. Five months later, we launched the BioBot Beta, the world's first desktop 3D bioprinter. This device moves in three axes, X, Y, and Z. And it uses a brand new method to print mixtures of cells and biocompatible materials, building 3D living tissues one layer at a time. And I brought a special treat for you today. What I'm holding here is is actually an ear that's made on the BioBot Beta, and it's made out of a cartilage-like material. And I brought it here really to show you the promise of this technology. So next, <laughs> next we partnered with 50 of the best research labs around the world, and we created a community so that they could begin to collaborate. Now we have researchers like those at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden who are using their BioBot to print vocal cords and heart valves. Others at MIT are printing blood vessels, and companies are beginning to use their devices to print miniature tumors that are being used to test new drugs with the hopes of reducing animal testing. <laughs> They've begun using the devices to figure out and begin to understand how we could build larger 3D living tissues for implantation with the hope of saving patients' lives. But our team didn't stop there. Armed with the feedback of these early partners, we went back and designed a brand new device, the BioBot One, which I'm really happy to share with you guys today. It's a, 
it's a brand new device, and it's, it's gorgeous, number one. But more importantly, it's, um, it's the world's most advanced and sophisticated 3D bioprinter. And it's also the most widely adopted. Researchers are adding this device to their wish list all over the world because without it, scientists really can't build the 3D living tissue models they need in order to do their work. Now, we've continued to make bioprinting easier and more accessible by creating standard kits of biolinks. Now, these biolinks are similar to the different colored cartridges on your inkjet printer back at home in that they offer scientists the flexibility they need in order to build different tissue types, things like skin, cartilage, lung, and liver, just to name a few. Coupled with our BioBot software, we've created the first digital suite of biofabrication tools that's making it's so much easier for researchers to begin bioprinting and literally adding a new dimension to their work. Now, I know we're just at the beginning of our mission, and we have a long way to go as we continue to explore biology, the next frontier. The BioBot 1 is just the first of many steps our team is taking to empower people to build with life. And now is the time for you to join us. Join us as we design life on our laptops and print it on our desktops. Thank you.